Song Vakepnen, Iceland's search for its Eurovision 2016 contestant is in full swing. We now have all 12 songs and we're gonna go around and say our top three. You guys, is it just me or is this selection a little bit weaker than in recent years? Mm -hmm. It's not just you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's way weaker, but it doesn't mean that there are no good songs, because there are a few that could score and um, end up really well, but it's not as good as the previous years, no. I just felt like a lot of the songs, they sound the same, it's like a wood nymph singing the same mystical song for three minutes, um, and it became a little difficult for me to distinguish. Of course, I don't understand Icelandic, but Kristen, you do, so perhaps for you it's slightly different? Mm, no, they're all really, really bland. Uh, after the first listening, I couldn't, there was only one song that I could actually remember, but then I forgot it again. Well, on that note, let's go around starting with Denise naming our number three. Uh, yeah, well, my number three is Sega Ayuru with uh, Kaisi. <laughs> Um, I think... Pronounce it crazy. Yeah, I... I <laughs> well, it is in my top three because it's so crazy. And it just intrigues me or something. And it's not like it's a really good song or it's a good voice <laughs> or something like that. But I don't know, there's something with it. It's, it's it just... Uh, it stays in my head all the time and like crazy, crazy, crazy. And I think it's, um, as long as they don't... Uh, end up with a circus on stage. I think it's it could work, but keep it a little simple. And I don't know. I think there are. If I look at the comments, I mean, there are a lot of people who think that it's so crazy, that it's so memorable, and that it might score just because of that. Oh, I hate your face. <laughs> so Sorry, it's just, she's like very Nintendo, and then she's like a salsa Latin woman, and then she's trying to be Margaret Burger. She needs to pick one idea and go for it. Sorry. No, she's an actress, she won't just pick one idea. No. She's gonna go, you know, explore and... I'm, I'm sorry, this song annoys me. Especially for the Nintendo sound. There's actually the, the rhyming. In Icelandic, there's this line that rhymes like... Uh, I keep seeing this cat and it's insane. But rhyming in Iceland, it was like something from, you know, like a children's book, a bad children's book. And when I heard that, I was like, no, wait, what? <laughs> is that a thing now? <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so, Kristen, what is your number three? I think my th number three would be uh, Greta Salome's um, Auni, uh, sung by Elizabeth Ormsleth. That's actually, that's a really nice ballad and it has that, you know, mystical sound that is Greta Salome. Mm. Yeah, that was actually, you know, one of the songs I wanted to listen to again, which was rare in Sengue Ken to Sexta. I really like the bridge in that song. It has a lot of life. It doesn't come to like two minutes, but when it does, it's like, whoa. Yeah, that girl can sing. And she's actually the daughter of Helga Möller, who was the first woman to compete for Iceland in 1986. Hashtag heard it here first. Now, <laughs> my number three, this actually surprises me because the first time I heard this song, I was like, WTF? But then I had to think, in any event, my number three is A Broke Student. Fatakur Namsmadur. Fatakur Namsmadur, yeah. This song, it's like, it reminds me of Polypunk, Polypunk, in that um, it's kind of silly, the message is very light, like I hear him talking about mom and dad at one point, and he talks about being broke, um, but you know, if you translate this into English, it could be quite witty and funny, just like the Polypunk song was. Yeah. Um, there's something, I don't know, it's dated pop rock with an edge of Green Day, perhaps I'm dating and myself. Blink-182, I heard like a lot of Blink-182. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very, you know, late 90s, early noughties, um, but it's fun, a little different. Um, there's even that clapping. You could see people at one point doing the whole <laughs> audience clap thing. So yeah, I mean, would I normally listen to a song like this? No. Are we in Iceland? Yes. Is it a bad selection? Yes. So is it in my top three? Yes. <laughs> Denise, number two. Uh, my number two is Greta with Radirnar. Um, well, we know uh, she's having a really good voice and in a song like this you need a really good voice and I think it's a really good song. It's more up-tempo than Never Forget and it's not a sing-along song, but they are trying to make it a little more mainstream with a oh, 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 like that. And I'm oh, 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 with her already after, yeah, one listen. So I think it's pretty good. And um, I also think, I mean, there is a guy that is singing along with her till, yeah, in the, in the chorus. And I would love to see that John C is coming with her and <laughs> sing that part with her. So I already see that. So your number two, please. Uh, my number two would be Hugur Min Er. That's uh, composed by Thorin Erna Clausen, the one who uh, wrote the lyrics to Coming Home. That's sung by Erna Hrun and, oh uh, God, what's his name? The guy. Hjörtur Trautason? Trust doesn't right, 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 right. That's, yeah, I think that was also a song I wanted to listen to again. I think it's, you know, it's maybe, maybe a little dated, but I think it has a really beautiful melody and, I mean, Ernarhen can sing. She really, really can sing. And, and I'm actually hoping this will be her year because she, the girl deserves a break, she does. And I feel like people don't mind when a duet is dated. You cut them some slack because it's two people singing and you're like, oh my god, harmonies. Huh? Yeah, like the Vidas and Monica, that was dated, but it was so cute. Absolutely. <laughs> now, my number two, I am echoing Denise over in the Netherlands. It's Greta Salome with the voices. This is folksy and sexy and she's giving it soul and I prefer this to her entry from 2012 and I think like the ooh, 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 ooh. I was gonna do Robin Sternberg for a minute that whole <laughs> ooh, ooh thing is so memorable falls on your ears um, it's also really mysterious I hope she doesn't sing in English if she wins because I think the fact it's in Icelandic makes it sound very interesting to us outside of Iceland um, more so than if she was doing that in English I'd be bored I'd be like this is Inya at a folk festival, but instead it's Greta Salome from Iceland. <laughs> yeah. Time for our number my one. My number one. Um, my number one is Alda dis Arna Dottir. Oh, I think for Icelandic people it will be so funny to watch this video with all those names. <laughs> but <laughs> with uh, Augnablik. <laughs> Um, I think it's so, so sweet and it does remind me of Little Skrif. Um, when I heard that song for the first time, I was immediately in love with it and that changed when they um, got the English version. So I really love this at the moment and like you said with Greta, I really hope also for this song that they keep it in Icelandic because also for this song it makes it really mysterious and yeah, I'm also in love with this song and I think it's so good and it's it's something like a lullaby but in a really good way um, when she's um, hitting the high note somewhere at the end I'm I'm waking up and I'm like oh god it's, it's so good and yeah I keep listening to it and um, I really hope that I don't know her I really hope that her voice is really good because there are no backings that can hide her voice with an up-tempo song so she really needs to shine and give it her all and then I think it could be great well my number one I was actually surprised by that one my number one would be Spring uh, the, the the rap song <laughs> Get 
till baka. Oh my god, I, know, I, know. I, was, I was surprised myself. I was actually, you know, because I find Icelandic rap rather boring. You know, I never think they're doing anything good, but this actually, this actually caught me. And I listened to it again. I was like, am I being serious? And I was like, oh, I am being serious. I kind of like this. But I, it's not going to win. Never, my favorite is never win, but I think it's enjoyable. She sings good and he raps good, and but I don't think it's going to win because they would probably change it to English and then it would be like pfft, flatlining all the way. But in Icelandic, I like it. I'm so sorry. Straight out of Compton, I get. Straight out of Reykjavik, I do not. Straight out of Breithofnir. <laughs> I just... I don't know. Iceland should play to its strengths, and I don't think hip hop, R and B, and rap are its strengths. Oh, good lord, no! Now, my number one, I was really struggling. There were a few other songs in my top five, including Helgi Valder Eiskerson with "Uneasy," and then Augnablick from Alda Dís Arnardóttir "Moments." But I am gonna have to give my number one to the beautiful lady named Carlota Sigardardóttir. Listen, Sargardador, he can be proud. His daughter is the bomb. This song, Unstoppable, Ostavandi, it's very now. It's giving me rolling in the deep Adele realness. There's like soul, there's build up. It's very modern, and you can hear this on the radio right now in England, in America, in Australia, wherever. It's just very current. Plus, she's cute as a button. Um, yeah, I don't know how it would sound in English, but I think it would sound really good because. It sounds really good in Icelandic already, and this song is so mainstream, not generic and disposable, mainstream, yeah. that it could work. In a, and you know, it's a top 40 hit. No, hopefully. I just think uh, the, the people who are choosing the songs, I think they need to either get out or step up their game because they're always picking the same songs. They're picking the same, you know, composer, composers, and it's always the same. They never think outside the box. I think they're afraid to because the last time they thought outside the box, Paul Bank went to Copenhagen. And, and there were a lot of people being in Iceland. I was like, oh my god, what the, what the hell is happening? Ooh. And you know, it's fun to think outside the box. And Paul and Paul made the final. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a final question and a difficult question, especially for us outside of Iceland. But who do you think Iceland will choose? Not who you want, but who they will choose. And perhaps we start with Kristen since she's <laughs> local. <laughs> mm, wow. Okay, this opinion might change. So I'm just giving notice on that one. But Carlotta could actually win this. Or e either one of Greta Salome's songs. But Ingo <coughs> is immensely popular in Iceland. So his broke student could actually score some money to go to Stockholm. <laughs> it could happen. It's really difficult to say because it's a bland national final. Uh -huh. There's not nothing that you know stands out at this moment. But if they you know do some serious changes and you have to see the songs live and blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Greta Salomis Ratnar. Um, yeah. You'll be very surprised, so I really want to see your faces. Um, because I already wrote this down before we filmed this, and the one I wrote down to be the winner um, is your rep, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. I think because there are, yeah, like you said, there are a lot of songs that really sound the same, and this song really stands out. It's so it different. Does. Yeah, and I think that's why, just like the Padapunk, that's why it could win. I don't like it, but uh, I think it's 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 so different that it might have a chance. Yeah, I think it killed William. <laughs> you know, he's he's dead inside now. <laughs> I think many people took the eruption of Ivala Lava Local as the end of the world, and I think if this song wins, it is the second sign the apocalypse is coming. This is crazy. But you know, I take your point. It's a very valid point. It, I think it will make it to the final. It'll get out of its semi-final for the very reason you say, because it's so different. Um, but I just have a feeling this is going to be between a broke student 
Unstoppable and The Voices, my top three conveniently. I just feel like, I don't know, they're three different songs and they're three like passable songs and I'm just hoping Iceland has good taste and sends one of them. Uh, my issue with um, Your Number One, Denise, I love that song, the, the mystical Augnablick, but it's just too, um, I'm in a fjord. The wind is hitting me. Oh, let's go to the Blue Lagoon. I don't know, it's just a little boring. I love it, but it's a little boring. Do you know what I mean? It's like flat. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't stage that at Eurovision. What would you do? Yeah, it's written by one of the, the, the Charlies who broke up all. Oh. Oh. It was like a girl band. Bad yeah. sign. Remember in 2013, the, the national finals, where there was a girl who like went really off key in her performance? Yeah, she was one of that girl band. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, whoa! Oh, well, this, this is, is another one, but she... No. Yeah, then the whole song will be gone. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? You can let us know here on Ruby Blogs, and be sure to press like, press subscribe. We would love it if you did. See you later.